and this is what we're going to talk about this evening uh, all about the master hand and we'll talk about what it is and how you can how you should decide which hand to make the master hand and basically when you're playing in a suit contract there are three basic options that you have in most suit contracts you can either start by drawing trumps um, and if you can make the same number of tricks by drawing trumps first and then doing whatever you wish to do, that's what you should do, because that's the safest option. The other option uh, that people sometimes want to do is to cross rough, uh, roughing in both hands, and that can be the right strategy on some hands. And perhaps the one that's more common is one where you primarily wish to rough in one hand. You can gain some extra tricks by roughing in one hand and using the other hand to draw the opponent's trump. So if you can't draw the opponent's trumps first, very often you want to do some roughing and you rough in one hand while you use the trumps in the other hand to draw trumps. And the other hand, the one you use to draw trumps, is referred to in bridge terminology as the master hand. Very often the master hand is the hand with more trumps in it. So it's very often your own hand rather than dummy. So we're going to look at these different approaches. Uh, and if you're watching this video on YouTube and you wish to join in the, the some of these lessons, uh, you can send me an email on that email there for details of how to join. So let's start off looking at this hand here, where North, your partner, opened one heart. You responded a spade. North jumped to three spades, which is obviously an invitational hand. And you've got 11 points uh, and a singleton. So let's suppose you bid four spades on this hand. So you end up in four spades, and the opponents lead the queen of clubs and you're going to stop to make a plan try and figure out the best way to make this a contract and to make over tricks if you can um, now what i'd like you to do just as an exercise on this one is imagine you were playing this in no trump without any trump suit here and imagine the opponents have led a club how many tricks would you expect to make so Imagine you're playing this in no trump, not, not in four spades. Um, so how many tricks would you expect to make on the lead of the queen of clubs if you were playing in a no trump contract? So let me launch that poll. How many tricks would you expect to make with normal distribution if you were playing this in no trump? <clears throat> Okay, let me end the poll and share the results with you. And most of you have gone for nine here, 58%, with 38% going for 10 and one person saying 11. Well, let's go back and see what we think. Well, if we count our likely tricks, I think we're going likely to make four spade tricks. There is a chance that we we won't. There's a chance that the spades are divided badly and that the jack of spades makes a trick. But with more normal distribution, you would expect to make four spades. In hearts, you're going to lose one trick to the ace, but you expect to make three hearts there. And you've also got one diamond and two clubs. So I think the correct answer is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So uh, I know most of you have went for nine, but I think the correct answer is ten. There, if you if you like to speak up why you thought it was nine, do let me know. But you you basically expect to make ten tricks here with normal uh, distribution in spades. Of course, you're very glad you're not playing this in no trump because if the opponents had led a diamond, it would have been a uh, very difficult contract. Um, but in four spades, you start with 10 likely tricks and you hope to make more here by 
doing some roughing. And on this hand, I can see a couple, a few possibilities. I can see the possibility of roughing some clubs in dummy. I can see the possibility of roughing some diamonds in my own hand. Um, or I could perhaps think about cross roughing, doing both of those. Or maybe I shouldn't rough at all. Maybe, uh, or at least to start with, maybe I should just start by drawing the opponent's trumps. So I'm going to give you uh, another poll with those options as to how you're going to uh, play this hand. And the options are, are you going to draw the opponent's trumps first? Are you planning to rough clubs in dummy, rough diamonds in your own hand, or are you going to plan to cross rough? So here comes the second poll question, and I'd like you to pick one of those options. Okay, let's have a look at the results, which are very interesting. And we've got a very wide range of results. Most of you went for cross roughing clubs and diamonds, followed by roughing diamonds, roughing clubs, and 16% uh, also said to draw trumps first. So what we're actually gonna do on this hand is look at this played in a variety of ways. And we're going to start by looking at this um, by trying to rough diamonds. And the reason I'm going for roughing diamonds rather than roughing clubs is it's much more likely to succeed. Um, so we're going to look at this uh, both by roughing and also see what happens if you just draw trumps first. But for me, I think the option of roughing diamonds looks very attractive. For one thing, I'm very likely to be able to rough two diamonds the two losing diamonds in the north hand in the south hand. And if I do that, I will be left with hopefully no spade losers, just one heart loser, no club losers. And if I can rough the two diamonds, I should be able to make 12 tricks. So that's, I think, by far the superior way of playing this hand. And let's just see how it goes. Um, by the way, we'll look at a moment what happens if you decide to draw trumps first. But if you do draw trumps first and you want to draw all the opponent's trumps, it will take three rounds probably, and you won't be able to rough two diamonds that way. So I'm going to defer drawing trumps and immediately turn my attention to diamonds. Play the ace of diamonds and rough a diamond. Okay. Now all I need to do is get back to the north hand so that I can rough once more. And I can do this with the trump because uh, I only need to rough one more time to get rid of that last diamond. So I'm going to do that, rough that last diamond. There's very little chance of it being over roughed. And once I've done that, I should just try to draw the opponent's trumps. One round has gone already. So I'm gonna try and draw another round. And if everyone follows to that, there's just one trump left, and all I need to do is get back to the north hand in order to draw it. I could try maybe playing a heart here to get back to the north hand, and if I can get back with the king of hearts, all I'm going to do now is draw that last trump, and now I've got um, <clears throat> the king of clubs and three good hearts. So I'll just cash the remaining Oh, sorry, I forgot about the eight. Sorry, the ace of hearts is still out. So I'm always going to lose that one. But whatever they play after that, I'm going to win that and take my last two hearts. So as predicted, I made uh, 12 tricks on that one. And basically, I added to the 10 tricks I was expecting to make by uh, making two more tricks by roughing, in, uh, roughing the two diamonds. Can I come in there, Tony, please? Yes, I... Yeah, go ahead. Um, on the count system, you've got seven clubs between the two hands, and therefore the remaining six clubs are more likely to divide four or two. Correct. Now, East has, if East has got the two clubs, which actually he ha or he or she has, yes. 
it obviously implies that you go for the diamond rough. Yes, that's right. So we're actually going to play this two different ways, uh, another two ways. Um, and as you can see, if you try to rough clubs, it's likely to be less successful. So the other way you might decide to play this, which a lot of people went for, is to draw trumps first. And although you can do that, it will take normally three rounds to draw the opponent's trumps, and you'll only be able to rough one diamond. So if you do that, let's let's play this again, but but drawing trumps first. So you start by drawing uh, two rounds of trumps. You draw a third round of trumps, um, and now you might start on hearts. The opponents will get in. They suppose they play a diamond. You can win a diamond, and you can rough a diamond, but only once because you've drawn three rounds of trumps. You can only rough one diamond so whatever happens now you'll play your hearts let's say uh cash your king of clubs and at the end you will probably have a diamond loser unless your opponents have thrown away their diamonds and you'll make one trick less you'll only make 11 tricks so um you know you're playing it safe by drawing trumps but you're unlikely to get a good, good score compared to those people who made 12 tricks. What about um, roughing clubs or, or trying to cross rough the clubs and the diamonds? Well, roughing clubs and diamonds is actually fairly pointless. And if you try to rough clubs, you're always in danger of um, an over rough. So let's suppose let's play this again. But suppose you you have in your mind that you want to rough clubs or that you want to cross rough. So if you start by trying to uh, cash your ace king of clubs and then uh, playing another club, now you can see that if you rough low, you'll get uh, over rough there. Let's suppose your opponents switch to a diamond, which you can win. You can now play a diamond, which you can rough. So you're kind of cross roughing here. If you try to play another club here, Maybe you decide to rough this one high so it can't get over roughed. Um, and then perhaps you rough another diamond, which you can get away with here. But the problem is because you've been roughing in both hands, you've shortened your trump holding. So you only have two trumps left in each hand. And now West has one more trump than you have. West has got three trumps. And you'll never be able to to draw trumps now, you'll always lose yet another trick. So if you turn your attention to hearts now, let's suppose you force out the ace, you can win this one, but West is going to win one more trick here. So whatever you do, you could try to draw trumps at this stage, but West is left with a trump. And this played this way, you'll only make 10 tricks. And really, uh, roughing clubs was a, a clearly inferior line of play, much less chance um, of su being successful. Um, whereas if you can rough two diamonds, um, you can make 12 tricks here. So the strategy, when you have a hand like this, especially where you've got equal trump length here, here you've got four trump in both hands, it's well worth considering what your plan is. And if you're going to make one hand the master hand, that's the hand you're going to use to draw the opponent's trumps with primarily. And you're going to rough losers in that hand in the other hand. And I hope you can see that that roughing two diamonds in this hand and using the north hand primarily as the master hand to draw the opponent's trumps was uh, by far the best approach on this one. Anyone have any questions on that one? But only if you have equal uh, trumps in both the hands, um, how would you decide which one to be the master hand? I yeah. know with singleton in one and yeah. double in the other. Is that so, the area then? So I, I don't know of any foolproof method of doing that. Uh -huh. um, uh, I, what, what you often have to do is consider it played different ways, as we've been doing this evening. Consider mm -hmm. it, shall I, shall I try to rough clubs in one hand or shall I try to rough diamonds in the other? Or on some hands, although not that many, you might try to, to cross rough. 
And here, I hope you can see that roughing diamonds is going to be much safer, much more likely to succeed because you've got far fewer of them. <coughs> my my thoughts are that you often need to consider it from both hands points of view um, as to uh, you know decide which is the best line. Okay. So I don't have a um, I, I can't always. Tell you, <laughs> yeah, I can't, I can't okay. give you a foolproof formula uh, on that one. Um, let's just look at another one. This one is is very simple in terms of play, but in terms of bidding, you open one club. There's a one diamond overcall here. If north doubles, that's a negative double. It should be showing both majors. And then if he bids three diamonds, maybe you'll bid three hearts and you'll end up in four hearts. And the opponents lead a diamond here. And again, we're going to think about the best way to play this. And I can see that there's a possibility of roughing spades in your own hand or a possibility of roughing diamonds in dummy. Um, but I think roughing diamonds in dummy is much more likely to be successful here. I mean, uh, one thing, you have fewer diamonds. You've only got four diamonds, whereas you've got five spades. And also both East and West have bid diamonds, so they, you know they've each got some length in diamonds. So you're very unlikely to have any kind of over off. So on this hand, my focus would be to make South the master hand and to get rid of these two diamond losers by roughing them in dummy. And I hope you can see if you can do all that and if you can draw trumps, you should hopefully just lose one diamond because we're not going to lose any spades. We hope we don't lose any hearts. And if we can get rid of these two diamond losers, we won't, um, we'll only lose one trick there. So much easier, I think, than, than trying to rough spades. Also, you don't really want to be cross roughing here because you won't be able to cash your clubs if you don't draw trumps. So this one is, is relatively simple. Uh, if they play a diamond and let's suppose they switch to a trump, which could be a good strategy if you if, once you see that void in dummy for the defense to do that. But you're going to now just um, rough a diamond, come back to your hand maybe with the ace of spades, and rough your last diamond. And if you if all that goes well, now we just want to draw the last trumps. OK, maybe come back to our hand. Now, we're coming back to our hand here. There's only one trump out, but we're although we're going to come back right to in order to rough a spade um, by roughing a spade, we're really only doing it um, to get back to our hand so we can draw the last trump. And once we've done that, all the trumps have gone and we'll just be able to cash the remaining uh, club tricks there. So again, you'd be able to make 12 tricks there by roughing diamonds. And you know, I wouldn't think about trying to rough spades. Uh, don't cross rough either. It won't really help you on this one. Again, we had equal trump length, and it was a good idea to try and plan the hand from both, from both hands' point of view. And Let's um, have a look at this one. This was the one I sent out as a, a quiz. And here we have the bidding of one heart, one spade, three spades. Four no trump here is Roman key card Blackwood. And the five spade response, uh, for those of you familiar with that convention, shows two key cards, which here is two aces and the queen. So you end up in uh, six spades on this one and the opponents lead a uh, a heart and i'd like you to try and make a uh, a plan about how you're going to play this and again i'm going to give you a few options are you going to draw all the opponent's trumps first or are you going to try to rough diamonds in dummy are you going to try or are you going to try to rough hearts in your own hand or are you going to try to cross rough hearts and diamonds? So have a little think about it. And in a moment, I will launch a poll giving you those options. Are you going to rough the diamonds, rough the hearts, cross rough, or are you going to draw trumps? Okay, let's. Um, 
look at the results. And the majority here have gone for roughing hearts in declarer's hand, 58%, but quite a few have suggested cross roughing or roughing diamonds, or two people said drawing trumps first. Well, let's look at those options. Um, and, you know, as I was saying, the only way I know to do this is to look at it from both hands points of view. So if I look, we're used to looking at it from our own hands point of view. And if we look at our possible losers, looking at it from South hand point of view, we can see we're not going to lose any spades. We're not going to lose any hearts and we're not going to lose any clubs. The only losers we have are these diamonds. And we could rough two of those in dummy. And if we can do that, we will just lose um, the uh, one diamond. Okay, if we if we play it that way, we'll always lose one diamond. If we're able to rough the two diamonds, then we'll just lose one one trick there. But it's worth looking at this from North Hand point of view because we've got equal trump length here, and if we make look at it from north hand point north's point of view let's consider how many potential losers we have again we've got no spade losers um we've got no club losers in fact we've got an extra club there that could be of use um in diamonds we've got one loser okay and in hearts we have two losers so we, we start out with three potential losers, but because of that singleton in the south hand, if I could rough both of those hearts in the south hand, um, I can avoid the heart losers. And that diamond loser can also be discarded on the club. Because I've got four clubs and th only three clubs here, I should, after I've drawn trumps, be able to discard that diamond on the fourth club. So this hand, I think, makes much more sense to make north the uh, master hand. And the goal here is to rough two hearts in the south hand. Now, because we want to rough two hearts, we don't really want to draw trumps. Drawing trumps will take presumably three rounds and we'd only be left with one trump left to rough the heart. So we're going to delay drawing trumps here, and we're going to rough the hearts. We're not going to attempt to rough the diamonds. I hope you can see that if you do try to rough any diamonds, you're always going to lose a trick, whereas we hope to make 13 tricks um, by roughing just hearts. So that's what we're going to do on this hand. If they lead a heart, that just makes our task uh, that much easier. And what we're going to play now, a lot of people decide to play the king of hearts here, but it's actually better to play a low heart. You don't need to cash that king of hearts yet. So it's much better to start with your roughing right away, rough the first heart low. Now what we want to do is get back to the north hand. Um, and because we only want to rough one more heart, we can actually afford to draw a few trumps here. We can play actually two rounds of trumps. As long as we keep a heart in the south hand, we can now rough that last heart, okay? And that's got rid of all the heart losers. All we want to do now is get back to the north hand because there's one more trump to go. So let's get back with the king of clubs and we'll draw that last trump. And now we're in great shape um, because we've got the uh, the clubs are good and, and we've got the king of hearts. So if we try to cash the three clubs here, we're going to discard that last diamond there, cash the ace of diamonds, and we can come back and make our 13 tricks. So this hand was, um, again, much easier to plan uh, if you took it from the point of view of the north hand and tried to rough the two hearts. Whereas if you try to rough diamonds, you can never make 13 tricks. You'll always lose a diamond. Yeah. Okay, any comments? So let's look at the last one today. And 
this one we're going to start off with a bit of a bidding question here north opened one diamond you bid a spade and north jumps to three spades so that's quite good news you've got a, a fit in spades and you have a, a very nice hand here in terms of points you've got eight nine ten eleven twelve fourteen fifteen points your partner has jumped uh, so they've shown a medium hand and you might well be thinking about the possibilities of a slam here this is also a good hand to use the losing trick count on and if I try and do that I've got um one two three four five six losers here according to the losing trick count two spades three hearts and a diamond so that is better than a minimum uh hand and I might well be thinking of looking for a slam here the only problem on this hand is I'm quite worried about the heart suit um because I've got a lot of losers there and if my partner doesn't have control of the heart suit we could be in trouble so you might be thinking of using blackwood or roman keycard blackwood but this is a good hand to actually start q bidding on so if you're familiar with that you could bid four clubs and what you're hoping for is that your partner responds to show their control either uh, and here um they bid four hearts and that's good news for you that means they've got first round control in hearts and you might well decide to launch into blackwood now if you bid four no trump and they respond five clubs if that is uh blackwood or roman key card blackwood well, let's think about it. if it's roman key card blackwood it might be showing zero or three key cards but it can't be three because you've got three key cards you've got two aces and the king so that is presumably zero key cards so what do you think uh north has not a, not a poll there but if north is saying they don't have any aces they should presumably have a void yes and if you trust their bidding maybe all go for six spades and you end up in six spades they lead a heart and this was a hand that was actually played um um before lockdown i think uh most people ended up in four spades um but it can actually make 12 tricks here um and again on a hand like this it's worth considering it from both hands points of view now you've got actually got more trump than the north hand but if you look at it from south's point of view you can see well we're going to lose a spade we don't have any diamonds and we don't have any uh clubs to lose but we've got these heart losers now you might be thinking well maybe i can um rough those in dummy or maybe i'll be able to discard them on the uh in the minor suits on the diamonds in particular but if you switch your attention and look at this from the north hand point of view i think you'll see it's much easier to plan that way because if i look at this hand from the north point of view i've got again just one spade loser the ace but i've got no diamond losers and no club losers so i think this is a lot easier to plan this time slightly unusually from the hand with shorter trump suit um and uh, just plan plan it from that point of view there's no need here to to do any roughing what we're going to do is well we are going to rough the first one because we don't want to lose that trick but then we just really want to um draw trumps um so before we get on to drawing trumps let's um count the trumps that we've got we've started off with a nine card trump fit so the opponents have got four so we're going to start by drawing trumps and counting them as they go and our goal here is force out the ace of spades and then when we, we regain the lead we've got all good tricks in the minor suits so let's suppose you play the queen of spades and they both follow so that's two trumps gone the opponents have now just got two trump left and if you play another trump and let's suppose west discards so there's still one trump left and it is the ace and east has it and now 
what you want to do. I, I think I often say that when there's one high trump out, don't draw it, just let them rough in whenever they want. And that's certainly the case on this hand here, because if I um, if I were to make the mistake now of trying to draw that last trump, um, I could be very badly defeated because I'll click here on the GIB button. And it's actually saying if I try and draw that last spade, the ace of spades, I could go down three tricks here. Because what would happen is that East will win and then they'll be able to cash hearts. So all you need to do now is just leave that last ace out and just go about your other business of cashing your other tricks. Let them rough in with the ace of spades whenever they want. Um, but as long as you've got that nine of spades in dummy, they won't be able to um, defeat you. So I'll just bring up the four hands there and see what happens. So don't cash that last um, trump. Don't try and draw that last trump. Just take your other tricks. You might start with the clubs. Then maybe uh, play the diamonds, cross over to dummy and keep taking your winners. At some point, East is going to rough with their ace of spades, but they can't cash any hearts because you've still got a trump left. So now you'll just rough that last heart and you'll claim the rest because you've got three trump left. So this was a rather unusual one where it works out better to look at the consider the hand from the point of view of north um, rather than trying to have a strategy looking at it from point of view of south, which would involve roughing the hearts or, or discarding them. I think it's much easier to plan if you look at it from north's point of view on that one. Any questions or comments on that? So that's a thing you often have to do on some hands. Look at it played different ways. Look at um, which hand you're going to look at it from which point of view. And that will often lead you to choose one strategy over another. OK, we'll um, we'll end the talk there. If there are no questions, I'll stop sharing my screen with you.